Okay, what's autonomy? Uh, what's that? Is it totally separate from um, autonomous? Yeah, autonomous individual means self-sustaining, stands on his own. Independent. Independent. Okay, autonomy, independence. Is this a good thing? That's an illusion. What does our culture think? Good thing? Yeah. Yeah, be yourself. Find yourself. Be true to yourself. Choose your own way. In our culture, autonomy is the pinnacle of existence. To be the autonomous individual, that's what it's all about. My own man. This is the American dream. I pull myself up by my own bootstraps. I'm my own man. I, I'm beholden to nobody. I kowtow to nobody. I make my own way. This is a, this is just this is the Marlboro man. This is the American man. This is the, this is the ideal. This is what we love. And we, in turn, in our culture, define freedom as autonomy. Freedom is the American ideal. It is the greatest thing. We're over fighting wars for the sake of what? Freedom. What does freedom mean? Typically, most Americans, most human beings understand freedom as freedom from. Freedom from restraint. Freedom from restrictions. Freedom from someone else forcing me to do what I don't want to do. Freedom from bad experiences. Whatever. Freedom from. And so in our mindset, our American gestalt, our worldview, freedom means autonomy. I am my own self-sufficient, self-sustaining, independent individual autonomy. That's freedom. That's real freedom. And when somebody puts me in a box or puts restrictions on me or limits me, they're, t they're messing with my freedom. And you can't do that because I'm free. All right. That's the American culture we live in. Is it Christian? How does God define freedom? Yeah? Freedom to. Freedom to, okay. Or freedom for. Very different. Thinking of the difference between the words servanthood and servitude. Okay. Um, servitude is slavery. That's yes. duress. You're being forced to do things. Yeah, you sure Very are. A few of us would define that as freedom. Servanthood, though, is that implies that that you have freedom to serve. Yeah. True. Now that's nice and that's very attractive. You've got a problem though, because. When St. Paul describes himself, how does he describe himself? Yeah. He uses the word doulos. St. Paul, doulos Christu, <coughs> slave of Christ. And a lot of our translations, like NIV, translated servant, because slave is just too harsh. <coughs> Paul knew the reality. Slave. Slave of Christ. Bob Dylan had it right. Right? No, later than that. <laughs> There's some truth to that, too. No, ah, it's from the, from the slow train coming. <coughs> or was it saved? You've got to serve somebody. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord. You've got to serve somebody. Right? Now, of course, he's got it right because he's quoting scripture. But the issue is this. Slavery is really what it's all about. You, are, you don't have freedom. Let's look at this word autonomy. Pick this one apart. Do the etymology on this one. What do you see in here? Okay, you got auto, which means what? Self. That's what auto means. It comes from autos, self. So an automatic is self doing things. Okay, auto reflex, self reflex. So auto means self. Nomi comes from nomus, which is no close. Nomus is law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Autonomy means a law to yourself. Self-law. 
This is the American ideal. I'm beholden to nobody. I make my own reality. I make my own truth. I live the way I want to live, and I'm free to do that. We're all free to choose our own reality. That's autonomy. That's a fallacy in the United States, because I'm not free to do whatever. Well, want. very true. It's a part of that illusion. But it's, okay. that, that illusion of voluntarism, where the reality is determinism. They're both kind of going on. So this autonomy, though, you see, we have this way of holding out autonomy as a really a good thing and as a, an ideal and as a great thing. The reality is autonomy is a bad thing. Autonomy, autonomy means self-law. It means I make my own law. It means freedom from everything. The reality is that real freedom, real freedom is only freedom within the will of God. Because... If you resist God's will, there's no freedom. It's called being a slave to sin. And what is the best definition of the will of God? What is the will of God? The law. Exactly. The will of God is nothing more than the law. So autonomy is the very antithesis of freedom. Autonomy is slavery to self. Autonomy is slavery to sin. What we are embracing is what we call a heteronomy. A law that comes from outside, not my own making. It is given to me from outside. It comes to me from God. And I know it in the Ten Commandments, which we call the Decalogue, the Ten Words. Okay? So the Decalogue is where I have God's truth, and it comes to me from outside. Not my own making. God gives it. God accomplishes it. Okay? So, heteronomy versus autonomy. Autonomy is opposed to God. Heteronomy is actually right, we're embracing the way God is operating, a law other than my own. Okay? All right. Other questions? Okay, good. Challenges to creation then. Autonomy is one of them. Because this heteronomy is actually wired right back into the creation itself. And the reason for that is this. Because when God created the universe, when he wired the universe together, he built into that universe certain rules for how it would function. His will was built into it. That will that is built into the universe is nothing more than his law. It's just built in. It's just the way it is. It's wired into it. Autonomy flies in the face of this. And autonomy says, to hack with God's law, I'll do it my way. That's autonomy. And only when we recognize God's law coming to me from outside and being binding on me, that's when real freedom takes place. And we realize that the law is simply wired into the universe. It's the way it is. And this is back to that drawing I gave you this morning where we got all the creation stuff, then all the special revelation, general revelation, special revelation. It's all one piece. It's all reflecting God's law. That means that the Ten Commandments were not made up after Adam sinned. The Ten Commandments were not written down for the first time at Mount Sinai, and that's when God came up with them because he had to give rules to these people who had sinned. What I'm arguing is that the law preexisted the fall. It was already there. It was built in. Murder was always wrong, even before Cain did it. It was just the way it was supposed to be. Don't kill. That's just the way it is. Don't commit adultery. Just the way it is. Don't steal. Just the way it is. And those laws, what we call the moral laws, are no different, are just like the laws of nature. So, the law of gravity. How long has that been around? <laughs> yeah! It's since creation. The law of, you know, of, um, momentum, action and reaction. How long has that been around? It's just the way it is. As long as there's matter, that's how it operates. This is the way it is. Now, when you get into quantum mechanics, things get goofy and things start shifting gears a little bit into Einsteinian physics. But in basic matter in this world, it's the way it is. 
So if I throw a bowling ball off of a building, it will go down, just the way it is. God didn't create cre gravity later on. It was just there. It's just the way it is. So the law, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, it's just built in. And it's fine. It only becomes a problem for me when I violate it. When I take gravity into account, it's a good thing. Right now, I'm pretty glad I've got gravity. It keeps me from hitting the ceiling. It keeps my books from floating around and helps me be able to walk. Without gravity, I don't have any friction. I'm not able to move forward. I can't even walk. How do you get around? So gravity has its place, and we learn to cooperate with it. So gravity is just fine. I don't think much about it. But if I step off of a building, suddenly I'm aware of gravity, and I'm not real happy with it. But gravity is just being gravity. Problem's not gravity. Problem's me, my action. The same thing with God's law. God's law is simply his law. It's just there. And it's not a problem until we violate it. And when we violate it, what do we call that? Autonomy. And autonomy is one of the ways that we fight against God's will for creation and fight against what God has accomplished in creation. All right? Another one, one of the ones that Kolb talks about a little more specifically, the enemies of the first article, is the teaching of pantheism. 